There's no need to get tense. Relax, relax, condense. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. Turning back to our schematic, notice that after the rectifier tube, there is a C23 and C24, and before it a C14. The C stand for capacitors, or as they were called when our radio was built, condensers. The symbol for a capacitor is two parallel lines. These represent metal conductors, one where electricity goes in and one where electricity goes out. The gap represents the insulating space between the conductors. This can be air, paper, plastic, or an electrolyte. Electrical charges form in this space, and it's the key to how capacitors do their magic. Unlike a resistor, which loses voltage instantly when turned off, a capacitor holds its charge even when power is removed, and then slowly releases it. When a signal enters a capacitor, it's altered because the capacitor holds on to its charge and releases it at a different rate. This allows capacitors to smooth a pulsing signal, and that's just what C23 and 24 are for. As voltage leaves our rectifier tube, it's pulsing because half of the AC signal has been removed. If the pulsing voltage is introduced into the radio signal, it will be heard as a loud hum. By smoothing the pulses, C23 and 24 filter the hum, so we hear just the radio signal. Because power filter capacitors need to hold a large charge, electrolytic capacitors are used. Electrolytics use a paper insulator impregnated with an electrolyte. The electrolyte allows electrolytics to hold a greater charge in a smaller space than other types of capacitors. The conductors in an electrolytic are two pieces of foil rolled around the insulator. An electrolyte separates into positive and negative molecules when charged, so one conductor becomes negative and the other becomes positive. Electrolytic capacitors fail over time because the electrolyte eventually dries out. That's why most unrepaired antique radios have a horrible hum when powered up. The original C23 and 24 electrolytics are housed in this cylinder, which is actually two capacitors in one. Here's the old capacitor next to the new ones I replaced it with. Capacitors have gotten both smaller and more reliable over the years, but even these new ones will fail someday. Here's one of the new capacitors getting a lead solder to it, and here are the two newly installed capacitors. Electrolytics are polarized, so it's important to install them with the correct orientation. To pass through a capacitor, a signal must have a constantly varying AC or pulsed voltage. If voltage is DC and stays steady, the first conductor will charge but never discharge to the second. Passing AC while blocking DC is an important characteristic of capacitors. Capacitors C15, 19, and 20 do just that in their jobs as coupling capacitors. Coupling capacitors join the output of one amplifier stage with the input of another. C20, for example, allows the signal to pass from the 6Q7 tube to the 25L6 while blocking DC voltage that would harm the circuit. As is the case with most of the capacitors in our old radio, C20 is a wax paper tubular type. Wax paper caps are almost always in some state of failure in antique radios. Unlike electrolytics, which fail when they dry out, wax paper caps fail because they absorb moisture, which breaks down the paper dielectric. The waxy coating helps slow this process, but over time the paper breaks down and the conductors short. Here I'm testing one of the old wax paper caps. It's supposed to measure 0.1 microfarad, but is coming in at a whopping 0.375. Farads are a unit of measurement for how much charge a capacitor can hold. And here I'm testing the new replacement capacitor, which is measuring correctly at about 0.1 microfarad. When I first started restoring antique radios, I ordered capacitors as I needed them. After a while, I realized it would be easier if I stocked capacitors in my workshop. Now I own bags of them like these. You can also see on the right that I drew diagrams of the capacitors in their correct positions before I removed them. Taking notes and photos helps make sure that new parts are installed correctly. Care must be taken when preparing components for installation. Leads should be short and insulated with rubber tubing when necessary to prevent shorts. Capacitors should be oriented near the chassis when possible to shield them from electrical noise. 
Solder joints should be bright and shiny, indicating a good connection. Capacitors block DC and pass AC, but lower frequencies of an AC signal are also blocked. Frequency is the rate that a signal changes in one second and is measured in hertz. American household power alternates 60 times a second, so its frequency is 60 hertz. Sound is also measured in hertz, and a piano's notes go from 27.5 hertz to 4,186 hertz. Radio frequencies are much higher, and the AM band our radio receives goes from 530 kilohertz to 1.7 megahertz. A kilohertz is 1,000 hertz, and a megahertz is 1 million hertz. Lower frequencies are blocked by capacitors because at lower frequencies they charge too slowly for the primary conductor to discharge to the secondary. Capacitors with higher capacitance, though, allow more of the lower frequencies to pass. The frequency that a capacitor starts blocking frequencies is called the cutoff frequency. The formula to compute cutoff frequency is 1 divided by 2 times pi times the ohm's resistance of the circuit times the capacitance in farad of the capacitor. Capacitors can be used in circuits to pass low frequencies, pass high frequencies, or pass specific frequencies. Capacitor C14 is used as a low-pass filter. It's attached between the hot side of the AC and chassis ground to give high-frequency noises on the AC line an easy path to ground. It's called a low-pass filter because only the low frequencies are allowed to pass to the main circuit. This is helpful because the AC wires in your home act like an antenna and pick up a lot of noise. Many appliances also add noise to the system. C14 helps ensure that fewer of these noises make it to the speaker where we would hear them otherwise. As we've seen, our radio is full of dangerous parts and C14 is no exception. While it does reduce noise, it can also cause a fiery short if it fails. Nowadays, we have specially designed capacitors that won't short or burn when they fail. These are called safety capacitors, and they must be used to replace old capacitors on the AC line. Here you can see the old molded paper capacitor next to the modern safety cap I replaced it with. And here it's installed and ready to go. Capacitors C12, 15, 16, 17, and 22 are wax paper decoupling capacitors. Sometimes called bypass capacitors, they also act as low-pass filters to send unwanted noise to ground. Capacitors C4, 13, 18, and 21 are mica-style capacitors. Mica capacitors were made for more precision and have the lowest capacitance values. The low values allow them to tune and filter the very high radio frequencies in the radio. Micas don't usually degrade over time, and the ones in our radio all measured correctly. As you can see, we've covered a lot of the capacitors in our radio. There are more, but before we get to those, it'll be helpful if we learn about some other components and principles. On the next video, we'll learn about the speaker field coil and induction. To stay updated, please subscribe and click the bell. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.